Tiberian Sun. Oh, this one's been a long time coming. Made by Westwood back in 1999, Tiberian Sun took the Command & Conquer franchise to a dark, depressing future where humanity is on the brink. <sighs> I've been playing this game for almost 20 years. I even had nightmares about this one cutscene where a not flame tank runs over a dude. I mean, picture being five and seeing this. Ugh. It's easy to say that Tibson is one of my all-time favorite games, and my favorite in the franchise. A lot of people will say Red Alert 2 was better, and while I also have an ungodly number of hours in that game, something keeps pulling me back to Tibson more often. However, that isn't to say the game isn't terribly balanced and buggy as all hell. With its larger budget, Tibson could afford to expand its acting roster, with stars such as James Earl Jones and Michael Bean. You son of a bitch. However, it's Joseph's acting that continues to steal the show. It's time you saw the future. While you still have human eyes. Special mention goes to Frank Zagarino. Zagarino? How the hell do you pronounce that? Hi. I'm Frank Zagarino. This dude perfectly plays the stone-cold war criminal and military mastermind, Anton Slavik. It's a shame they couldn't get him back in time for the sequels and instead just unceremoniously killed his character off between the games. But then Virgin Interactive died, and Westwood soon found themselves under the thumb of a new publisher, Electronic Arts. And they wanted it out. Now. Okay, real talk a second? If you want a more serious look at the lore of this amazing series, check out No Strings and Jeffild? Jeffild? How the hell do you pronounce that? The two of them cover the world far better than I ever could. Top-notch content, the real good shit. Last time on Planet CNC. Nod got their shit kicked in and are forced back into the shadows after the apparent death of Kane. GDI gradually expands into a superpower of its own right, they even built this fucking Outpost 2 looking space station. Fuck me, that's a joke no one's gonna get. All the while, Tiberium has spread across the globe, causing untold ecological damage, rapidly mutating wildlife, and rendering much of the world a barren, hostile wasteland. Welcome to 2030. Aboard GDI's orbital space station Philadelphia, Papa General Solomon stares confused at an extremely low-resolution screen, when suddenly... Hey man, check out how hard I can crush this strawberry. God, I wish that were me. So, we open up with a GDI trooper fleeing from some huge motherfucker. Dude looks like one of those inflatable tube guys. Mustering our small team, we route the Nod forces and mop up their base. Hey, check out this hidden Nod base! Really trying to play for that nostalgia, huh? Next up, we move in to save some civilians. I'm gonna be badass naked so the wind could just be hitting my balls and shit. Hey bro, watch your jet! Watch your jet bro, watch your jet! Ah, excellent. I see we're still checking for cheap anti-air by sending out expensive aircraft. Do you know how hard pilots are to train? So like, I did like a community college course on this, so I can- to take out that long range missile cruiser. We'll have a couple of escorts to clear out any air threats along the way. There we go, that's better. Can I just point out how GDI's dedicated anti-armor infantry is literally just a guy throwing fucking landmines? Seriously, it's been 10 years since the last war? And GDI still mainline Grenadiers like it's World War One. They also have a slight chain explosion problem. Whoops. Ford Recon discovers a strange crashed object that Nod is salvaging. After taking a quick detour to cut off their retreat lines, McNeil moves in to take the Nod base. This is one of the first times we get to see the amazing GDI Titans. Their tanks on little chicken legs. Look at them! They're adorable! They form the backbone of GDI's mailed fist, and you'll be seeing me use a lot of them in this footage. We wander our way towards the Nod base to bust it up, and... That's... That's a fucking UFO. We're four missions in, and we've got fucking aliens. Except, not really. The thing is crashed, and there's nothing alive on it, but... It's still cool, though. Look at it! It's blue! 
after taking the crash site, Nod understandably doesn't want to let GDI keep it, and so they throw everything they can at us. This, unfortunately, also coincides with one of the new weather features of the Tiberium world, an Ion Storm. The screen is coated in a Human Revolution piss filter, whilst most advanced tech, effectively meaning just GDI stuff, gets grounded. Guess we're gonna have to hold out until the storm clears up. <sighs> After that buttocks clenching holdout, McNeil enters the ship and finds it partially dismantled. He is then jumped by a member of the Forgotten, named for the fact that they are completely abandoned as a plot point after this game. This sneaky agent is called Umagon, and she needs McNeil's help to save the Forgotten's captured leader. A quick side mission here has us do some wacky japery and save scumming to destroy some radars. There's a lot of ambushes on this level that will completely wipe you out unless you break them. Luckily, the AI tends to get into a fight with the local wildlife, who quickly run rampant and trigger all these ambushes early for us. Well, with the radars dealt with, Nod will be slower to react to us. Effectively meaning we don't have to do the next mission with a time limit. Here we meet the Mutant Commando team. Umagon, Ghost Stalker, and the Hijacker. Umagon is a sniper, capable of one-shotting almost any infantry unit, but is virtually useless against tanks. Ghost Stalker, meanwhile, is a walking glass railgun, and a huge friendly fire liability. His railgun will kill whatever the shot passes through, meaning he'll often accidentally kill your own units. Fuck! He also gets C4, since he's meant to be the commando replacement, I guess. And finally, the Hijacker. A cool dude with a need for speed. Arguably, this mission is harder than the side mission, since most of the combat scenarios have to be picked apart like a puzzle if you want to get past them. Scripting weirdness abounds when piles of explosives next to certain buildings don't destroy the buildings when they're blown up. The trio managed to break out Tratos. Tratos. Fuck it. This guy. As they leave, a GDI MCV is flown in to set up shop and mop up the remaining Nod forces. Oh no! So, with this guy in their possession, McNeil practices his bad boy routine. Do you love nothing? I love to win. Then the guy starts having a fucking vision. Seriously, the Forgotten are literally just the Fremen from June at this point. As his vision subsides, he reveals that Kane has the MacGuffin McMuffin, and the location of the Vegas Party Palace. Another side mission has us blowing up a dam providing power to Vega's base. Hello, Alex the Lion! <laughs> we suffer through this mission because it makes the following one so, so easy. With his power down, Vega's base has no air defenses, and it just so happens this is the first mission we get GDI's jump troopers. Time to cheese. <laughs> You dumb fuckers, you can't even hit me! <laughs> I need reinforcements, you must send help! You'll find there is surprisingly little I must do, General Vega. So, Vega is abandoned by Kane for his failures, and decides to kill himself before his temple gets nuked. Hey, they've taken Hammerfest base. Wasn't like your brother at Hammerfest? Oh, he dead. Hammerfest base is another save scum heavy map, as we have to guide a small team of engineers and hover MRL this hover MRL this these things through this snowy canyon. Luckily, there are hidden health crates scattered around. Gotta love that funny angelic choir when you pick them up. Like some higher power is blessing our hovering missile platforms with good health. Toast these power plants and sneak past the obelisk. Once inside Hammerfest base, we have to micromanage the fuck out of our units to prevent them from destroying the base defenses we're about to capture. As soon as we gain control over the base, we have to quickly reactivate the remaining defenses. Here, I like to send out teams of disc throwers to destroy the bridges in order to slow Nod's counterattack. 
let's talk about the Nod fucking artillery. Two hits kill almost everything, and by the time the first one lands, the second is already in the air. The only effective strategy is to just rush them, ignoring everything else in a suicide charge. After rushing the base with wave after wave of titans, we finally break the enemy line and discover that Kane has left McNeil a voicemail. Hey, so, uh, I killed your brother. Laugh out loud. The next mission involves us chasing after the tech Nod has stolen from Hammerfest. Kane is shipping it out via high-speed train, but we're lucky enough that a bridge on the route has collapsed. This mission takes about a minute to complete. Seriously, we literally just rush the train while it's parked. While we were busy racking up the high score in avoidable casualties, Kane began firing chemical missiles all across the European Union. Uh-oh. At the behest of Umagon, we go and rescue some mutants from a prison camp. We end up leaving the GDI forces behind as a distraction while we move the mutants up to the prison. This mission displays the terrifying combo of the medic and the ghost stalker. His railgun and above average armor mixed with the medic's healing turn the two of them into an almost impenetrable position. We bust them out and evac them. Moving on, we target a Nod supply base that is shipping additional chemicals to the missile silos. However, this base also has its own silo. Well, thank fuck we came here, huh? We start the mission with some of the mutants we saved and a couple of disruptor tanks. We'll ignore these for now, instead making extensive use of jump jet cheese as soon as possible. We want to cut off Nod's supply of chemical missiles. Whoa, look at this ugly fucking thing. Can I, can I even show this on YouTube? Not only do these vein holes provide Nod with the resources required for those missiles, the hole sometimes spits up this highly damaging gas, while the veins severely damage vehicles. Best to clean them up now. Once they are dealt with, we amass a small army of disruptor tanks and storm the base. Let the base cannon kick it. As we finish the mutant's mission first, we've also unlocked a secondary objective, getting Ghost Stalker aboard a train. This unlocks a short, secret mission, where a mutant attack team wipes out a Nod power station, which kinda helps us in a following mission? Finally, we're ready to take on the Nod chemical base. It's a cloaked, heavily defended nightmare on the ground. So we're gonna spam jump jets again! We have to move quickly to deny them any more missiles. Throughout this mission, we get a steady supply of mutant reinforcements that we can throw into the meat grinder. Eh, whatever. I'm not paying them. Nod has begun to roll out some advanced UFO-looking fighters, and Solomon wants them gone. So we sneak a team into the base, locate the factory, and destroy it. I spent way too long trying to destroy as much of the Nod base with the commandos as possible. Which was dumb, because I delayed the arrival of the Mammoth Mark fucking 2. The MK stands for motherfucking cool! This armored elephant is a walking fortress of death. So much so, you can only field one of them at a time. Its in-game sight is actually shrunk down due to engine limitations. But you can see in the cutscenes and design art, it's almost as large as a building. Big. Boy. This is also the first time we encounter the problem of Hunt the Harvester. Some missions desire the complete annihilation of Nod forces, and that includes their unarmed, most likely civilian operated harvesters. Because we're the good guys. As you blow up the refineries they're meant to return to, they can often wind up stranded in the strange corners of the map, forcing you to spend a stupid amount of time trying to find them. Luckily we play on modern resolutions. Just imagine trying to find this thing on a screen squished into 640 by 480. The Kodiak is grounded by an ion storm, whilst Umagon is somehow kidnapped off screen by Nod. Fucking what? You know, I'm getting pretty tired of this fucking McNeil guy, he's kind of a massive bummer. Eh, fuck it, kill him. We better get hot right now! This mission is a nightmare. Resources are scarce, radar is down and artillery lurk in the shadows. We can't spam jump jets, so instead, we'll spam titans. Our first few teams tentatively remove artillery positions, opening up 
valuable resources. Once we've got a steady income, we camp Nod's Tibfield and kill their harvesters. This attracts every active unit they have into a nice little kill box. And while their forces are distracted, we move in and wipe out their base. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Get back! McNeil and the crew cut off General Solomon to listen to a voicemail from Ghost Stalker. He reveals that Umagon is still in Kane's temple, and that he has some huge missile that could destroy the world or something. Only now, just realizing that Umagon is missing, McNeil decides to attack Kane's temple directly. Whoops, visual bugs. We wipe out this Nod perimeter base and rapidly begin replacing it with one of our own. We've got some cheesing to do. The game wants us to cross a bridge to the west and take out a Nod ICBM platform, but instead, there's a missile silo down here that's just on the screen. We're gonna move a force over to get rid of it. Once that team is down there, we can move to tackle the ICBM launcher. Jump jets, go! The second that missile is taken out, the map expands, revealing the rest of the South Islands. The team we landed earlier moves quickly to capture the now rebuilt missile silo, as well as Kane's pyramid. With the silo under our control, we now have access to Nod's cluster missile attack, which will make surgical strikes on those ICBMs far easier. We'll just throw out some jump troopers as suicidal spotters and follow them up with explosives. <laughs> Finally, it's just a matter of cleaning up the remaining Nod bases. Without the time constraint imposed by those ICPMs, and without the constant barrages of cluster missiles, this is incredibly easy. Oh hey, check out these classic mammoth tanks! And they're dead! Goes to show that tech is advanced, I guess? After deleting the remnants of the Nod base, the mission is complete, and McNeil rushes in to save Umagon. Oh, Jesus, what happened to its face? Oh, yeah. Hey, man, check out my glowy orb. Isn't it cool? Seems pretty cringe to me. <laughs> You're cringe. I am the future. The Tiberian sun has risen! Not in my world! That's an order. Human plot device then gives Umagon an injection that should slow her mutation, allowing her and McNeil to live happily ever after. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Welcome to the Brotherhood. In Nod's campaign, we follow the story of the cold and cunning Anton Slavic a member of the Brotherhood's elite Black Hand, saved seconds from execution by Kane's own order. The second he's back aboard his command vessel, he executes the crew responsible for his capture, and then returns to commanding his forces like nothing happened. What a dude! Slavic is joined by his second-in-command, Oksana, and Nod's tactical computer and total robo, Cabal. Define favorable outcome, Cabal. They all die. Yep, totally trustworthy. The first mission is just like GDI's. Gather some forces, learn the basics of base control, and crush some light enemies. Speaking of Nod Crush, that's the name of the track that plays on this mission. And honestly, I love it. It's one of my favorites, and I think one of the most iconic tracks in the game. Not a lot to speak on, but there is a slight difference regarding civilians. Since now you can blow up their buildings and kill them with impunity. You know, hashtag just nod things. Here we learn the truth about the Brotherhood's weakened state. In the time between the wars, the Brotherhood has been under the rule of a GDI-appointed puppet leader. A man by the name of Hassan. 
Hungry for this traitor's blood, Slavic sets forth on a mission of revenge. First, by taking over the Brotherhood's broadcasting network. General Solomon is said to have become mentally unstable. Here, Oxana can broadcast a call to arms for all Slavic's loyalists. As the forces arrive, we gain control over a couple of cyborgs. I suppose even they can be swayed by the word of Cain. These boys will make up the bulk of our forces. Until the expansion, anyways. Next, Cabal suggests we should rescue some allies to our cause, and thus we make a daring raid on a holding camp. Uh, 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 this is taking forever! Taking over this side base, we rally a force and raid the camp, extracting the rebel commander and securing his support in the battle to come. This all culminates in an attack on her son's pyramid. This battle is a tough one, with his forces rapidly responding. Now, I have to tell you about how much I fucking hate Tic Tanks. They cost as much as a Titan, but are all around worse. Even in large groups, they're not very good outside of extremely rare situations. They're supposed to make up the backbone of Nod's armored column, but that role instead falls to the fucking attack bike and its wood armor. Wood armor. As the temple falls, her son attempts to escape, but we cut him off. Time to face the music traitor. And at her son's televised execution, Cain reveals himself to be alive. You're the son her son. You can't kill the Messiah. God damn, what a dude. With the traitor removed, Cain instructs Slavic to begin the campaign against GDI anew. His first objective is to recapture the original Temple of Nod and save some nondescript artifacts from GDI's hands. Nod sure does love their artifacts. I, uh... I never do the side mission here. Because it sucks. Dealing with a heavily fortified GDI base during an ion storm with a time limit is not fun. The bonus it gives us isn't even particularly worth it. The main mission itself involves preparing a force to invade the GDI excavation base. Moving south, we capture a secondary base to get an extra refinery and access to medics. Better keep them alive, not as enough UN sanctions already. Well, I guess it's time to spam cyborgs! There. Oh fuck, what are they stealing? Following this mission, a voicemail from Kane tells us to recollect a fucking UFO he left parked here. And it's not there. Resident Crackhead Vega, in his infinite wisdom, stole it first and then decided to go to the States for some hamburgers or something. And now he's crash landed it there. Mayday! Mayday! Welcome to one of the worst missions in the entire game. God damn, I fucking hate this mission. We have to rush our forces past a number of GDI patrols, hoping to not lose too many of them. Once we find the UFO, we discover that Vega's already stolen parts of it, so now we have to rush southwards to destroy the bullet train and recapture the artifacts before Vega can ship them out. Did I mention I hate this mission? There is basically no shame in looking up a walkthrough, because it is a summit of a level to get through blind. You will fail, 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 lose too many troops and have to restart, lose your engineers to Wolverines, blow up the train too early and balk the scripting. The list goes on. This mission is anarchy. <laughs> it sucks, man. The crew watch as Umagon has sons the shit out of Nodgu number 27. Slavic is pissed. Only he's allowed to do that. Cabal correctly assumes that she'll try to either escape to a GDI medical colony or to an underground rail system in New Detroit. Well, Nod's here to prove you can't have shit in Detroit. 
Oh, fuck yeah. We get the artillery here. Now, this thing is really something. They vastly outrange any of the units on GDI's side while dishing out piles of damn- Wait, I've already spoken about this. What the fuck am I- So, we amass a giant blob of tick tanks and sit on the escape route of her train. And then we wait. When she arrives, I slow down the game speed so I can order the team to target the front carriage, as hitting the wrong segment will fail the mission. With the locomotive disabled, we capture the mutant. In a massive Batman gambit, Slavic lets Yumagon escape in a ploy to have her lead nod to the mutant base. What the fuck? The next mission has us taking over a GDI base and using its forces to destroy a mutant one in a false flag operation. You'd think they'd notice the red paint on everything. Well, just like in the GDI campaign, we're gonna spam the shit out of Titans. The mutant forces are mostly repurposed civilian vehicles and are remarkably tough despite this. They also have packs of fiends, which are bloody dangerous. Oof! Deeper into their base, we see a mix of stolen GDI and Nod Tech, including a fully operational second generation obelisk of light. How in the fuck did they manage that? Like, I can understand if it was a restored one from the previous war, but this model is fresh, new, top of the line. We don't even have access to it yet. After smashing the shit out of the base, none other than our favorite walking, talking plot enhancer, Dratos, gives himself up to stop the massacre. Nod is quick to use its media to paint this event as GDI terrorism, and the majority of the globe's mutant population apparently believe them. With the support of the mutants now behind Nod, Kane orders the destruction of a research lab, studying a potential cure to his divination process. A side mission here has us collecting some chemical weapons needed to produce a missile that'll aid us in this objective, and here we get to experience the majesty of the Cyborg Commando. Armed with a fucking BFG and healing in Tiberium, he massively outclasses Ghost Stalker by the mere fact that he doesn't run up to defensive structures like a dumbass and actually shoots at them instead. What a good boy! Smuggling with trucks past the GDI checkpoint, we move on to the next mission. Leading a Nod informant to a nearby supply cache, he rallies some mutants to his aid. This gives us what may be the only surviving elements of the once planned Forgotten faction. The Forgotten's infantry ranging from equal to light infantry to rivaling cyborgs in terms of combat effectiveness. The informant uses these mutants to push through the GDI defenses, and in doing so, secures a route for our MCV as well as the chemical trucks we recovered. Ah, nice and safe. While we prepare a strike team to find the medical center, teams of mutants strike out on their own, grinding themselves against GDI's defenses in the name of Kane. However, Uncovering the center reveals its true purpose to the mutants, who then turn on us for tricking them. Bah. They've already served their purpose. Fire the missile! Get fucked. Five minutes later. I should have known this would be a trap. I would have. The mutants were already well aware of Nod's tendency to use false flags. This should come as no surprise given that Nod harbors a KKK level of hatred for mutants. But Kane isn't one to leave his chosen behind. A small Nod commando team is positioned by the north entrance of the facility. They will help you escape. Meanwhile... Hello, I am Human. Please let us the, the commando team breaks out Slavic, and then we move to bust out Oxana. The dynamic duo then take over a nearby transport and escape. The cyborg commando takes this mission by storm, so it isn't really what I would call a hard level. Well, short of Oxana getting ballsy and dying to turrets. I am disappointed. Well, excuse me, but you're the one who sent us to that dummy base in the first place. 
Kane now wants us to test his new chemical missiles, and we get the choice between two missions. In the first one, we recapture an abandoned Nod base, now overrun with Tiberian life. In the other, we have to defend an extremely slow transport route of chemical supplies. I'm an idiot, and I chose the second option. Wait, are those fuckers using my own cheese against me? Get the fuck out of here! We get our hands on stealth generators and stealth tanks during this mission, and the AI has almost no ability to properly counter them. It's almost cheating. Rather than wait for the slow-ass supply trucks to trickle into the base, we'll tackle this the old-fashioned way. As the Brotherhood prepares for its final operations, we move in to destroy the prototype of the Mammoth Mark II. After guiding a chameleon spy into a nearby comm center, we get to watch as the Mark II wipes out a range of test targets. Well, you know what they say about the bigger they are. Kane has been kind enough to give us a fleet of Banshees for this mission, so we'll use them to make a surgical strike. All the pieces are falling into place, and the Brotherhood is readying the killing blow. An ICBM strike against the Philadelphia Space Station. Firstly, a small stealth operation is used to kidnap McNeil's brother, Jake, and provides Anton with a way of getting past Hammerfest's impenetrable Firestorm defense grid. There's not a lot to say about this mission, it's just a straightforward sneak and steal. So, uh, as a side note, the guy who plays Jake is actually Joseph's younger brother. I mean, I wouldn't have known, they don't look alike. Cabal then suggests that we rob GDI of the historical advantage that won in the last war, the Ion Cannon. So we sneak in an odd spy team to steal the free control code segments. Honestly, it's hard to believe this is the penultimate level, but I suppose it perfectly sums up Nod's preferred tactics. Why deploy an army when a small team using subterfuge can achieve the same results? With the codes now in our possession, Slavic's moment of victory is at hand. The attack on Hammerfest base starts with the younger McNeil breaking into the Firestorm defense grid and shutting it down, allowing Nod forces to enter the otherwise impenetrable fortress and behind them, a trio of ICBMs intended to liberate Belka, I mean, end GDI oppression. In an attempt to rob us of their refinery, GDI wastes their only shot of the ion cannon, as our override codes then wrestle control of the network from them. Crews aboard the orbital stations are no doubt scrambling to correct this, so a one hour timer begins. So, uh... I only learned earlier whilst reading the wiki that this timer isn't isn't right. You actually get three hours. Fuck. Cheese. Pressing on, we deploy our first two missiles with a healthy defensive line. At the second site, we even deploy a second MCV in order to build more extensive defenses around it. The final launcher is the hard one. We must push across a well-defended bridge to the north. This will be our Rubicon. Careful use of cyborgs, stealth tanks, and artillery pick off the defenses on the other side of the bridge, and we can finally sneak the launcher in. Ah, uh, fuck! And mission complete. Slavic savors his victory over a beaten and bloodied McNeil, gloating as the missiles destroy the station. With it out of the way, Kane sends out a worldwide broadcast, where he promises a new age of hope and peace. Meanwhile, deep in his temple, his burnt cripple ass just launches a rocket and then fucking sparkles away like this is Star Trek or some shit. The 
is at peace. Glory to Cain. General, our enemy is deploying their yee-yee-ass haircut. <laughs>